Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Michael. I'm going to be your host for round about the next probably about 45 minutes. I think that's what it should last for. Today, we're going to be looking at the discount options that you've got available in CH50 accounts. Now, it does differ depending on the level that you're on, and I'll be explaining that as we're running through the session today. So session should last in total, maybe about about 45 minutes, that includes the opportunity for you to ask questions along the way as well. But it's a brand new topic that we're running with you this afternoon. Right, a little bit of housekeeping just before we get started. As usual, you don't need a microphone for these sessions. If you've got one and you've enabled it, you'll find you're muted automatically and you can't unmute yourself. So that means if you've got any questions for us today, you're going to need to type them into the questions panel, which you should see in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. If you can't currently see that, you just need to, on your toolbar, just click the little icon, the one that looks like the speech bubble containing the question mark. And that means you should then see that questions box. If you want to communicate with us, that's your way of doing, doing that during the session. So any comments or questions you have, pop them in there. We'll try our best to pick those up. So I'm joined by Jackie this afternoon. Jackie's on hand to help answer any questions that you might have. So keep her busy, keep your questions coming. If you're not sure about something, just pop a comment or a question in there. There is a copy of today's slides that you can download via the handouts link. So again, if you want a copy of the slides, I know a lot of you do like to download them. We do make the recordings available afterwards though, so don't think you've got to frantically download the, the slides and then start making notes. The recordings will be available afterwards. And finally, there's an option there, just to quickly mention it, that you can switch to full screen mode as well. So when I'm sharing my screen during the session, you may things find things just that little bit clearer if you do switch to full screen mode, just to make things that little bit bigger. Right, okay, let's have a look at what we're going to be covering in this session today. So we're going to start with a little bit of background uh, to discounts. We'll then run through a series of demonstrations of the discount options that you've got available. And I will outline the availability of them as well, because as I mentioned, they're not necessarily available in all levels of the software. So on each slide, I will... I've got that outlined as to what is and isn't available on the various levels. Once we finish the demonstrations, and there's quite a few to go through, uh, we'll have a quick look at the invoice and order defaults area. And also, probably one of the more common questions as well, where, where discounts have been applied, particularly if multiple discounts have been applied, how can I work out where the discount value is actually coming from? So a little tip for you on that one as well. And then just at the end, we'll explain more about the additional support. Now, all of the information, detailed information is available about the discount options. That's all available via our help center. If you've downloaded a copy of the handouts today, uh, then the links will, on those handouts will work for you. But obviously the information is really easy to find within our help center anyway. Right, okay, let's get started. So a little bit of background first of all, and I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of cover both of these options in the session today. But we're looking at when when you start entering an invoice, and it's specifically invoicing I'm gonna be looking at, obviously you've got the same options if you're using the sales orders option. Uh, but when you drill down on an item line, and it doesn't matter whether it's a product or a service, there's really two areas that you're looking at. There's the unit price and there's the discount area which is either going to be the discount percentage or the discount amount and it's the specifically it's the, the discount options that i want to concentrate on today we will pick up on the a couple of factors that do affect the unit price such as price lists but i would sort of regard that potentially price the price list option as a discount option as well because you can actually get it to calculate the unit price by applying a discount automatically and it will pull that unit price through automatically. So touch on that as well a little bit, but there is a recorded webinar on price lists as well. So that, these are the sort of areas that we're gonna be looking at today. Now there are loads of discount options available for you within the software. So I'm just gonna run through a series of demonstrations at this point. I'll share my screen. And we'll quickly start running through them. I'll introduce each one with the use of a slide though. So we obviously we'll be back and forwards. 
So the first one we're going to look at is discount percentage. Now I've put this little table in the top right hand corner. So you've got the three levels of CH50 accounts. There's essentials, standard and professional. So I've obviously indicated whether this option is available depending what level of the software that you're using. So discount percentage you'll find within the customer record. It, it enables you to set an overall discount percentage. And it means that whatever you uh, enter on an invoice, the discount percentage will then be applied to every single item line on that invoice, the sales order. Or if you're working on the, on the supplier side, on the purchaser side, uh, if you're doing purchase orders, it would apply to that as well. So a similar option. But we just want to concentrate on invoices today. So customer record defaults are then the discount percentage. Let's quickly run through a demonstration on this one. So I'm going to go into customers. I'll just concentrate on this customer today. So into the record. And then on the defaults tab, it's this field here, discount percentage. So what I'll do is I'll just pop in 10%. Save the record, close out, and then we'll go across to invoicing, generate a new invoice, select that customer, and then I'm going to pull through a product. Now, actually, before I pull through that product, I'm going to try and make it a little bit easier. I will quickly go back into uh, products and services and I'll adjust the sales price. Actually, I've already got that entered. My mistake, I was looking at the wrong column there. Right, back, sorry, back into invoices and credits. New invoice, choose that customer, A1 design services, and we'll choose the, uh, the widget. So when it pulls it through, you can see the price, 100 pounds. So we try to use a nice round figure so that you can see when a percentage discount is applied, you can see what that translates to. So it's automatically applied that 10% discount to whatever the sales price is. That would be the same if you were using a service invoice or anything like that, it would pull it through automatically. Now, if you wanna see where that discount is coming from, what we can do is just drill down on the item and we can see you've got the discount percentage and also you've got the discount uh, amount as well. And we'll come on to those ones in a, a few, a little bit later on in the session. But that's a nice simple one. But as I say, in the customer record, the discount percentage, it applies that percentage discount across the board to everything you add to the invoice. So nice, simple one, that one. Right, I'll reset that to customer. To defaults, we'll just set it back to zero, save the record, and we'll move on. Right, back to the slides. Next one. Now you'll see straight away on the table at this point, this option is only available on the professional level of the software. Again, it's an option that you'll find within the customer record, but it's invoice value. Now, invoice value is based around a table that you would set up. You would say, right, well, when an invoice reaches a certain amount, what I want to do is apply a percentage discount. And again, it would do that across the board on all items included on the invoice. So two areas that you need to be aware of this. First of all, where you actually set the customer to have this discount applied. So again, customer record defaults, you've got an additional discount drop down. You choose invoice value. And the other one is actually setting the discount percentages themselves and the values. So we'll have a look at both. Right, back to my screen. So we're going to start by going into the customer record. And then into defaults, and it's this field here, additional discount. So by default, it will be set to no additional. So the one we're looking at this time around is invoice value. So we set it to that. Let's make sure that discount percentage is zero. And we'll just save it. 
And then if we go into settings and then customer defaults, and you've got the discount tab at the top. So remember, as per the slide, this option would only be available to you if you're on the professional level of the software. So on the discount table, just in case of you popping in your values, obviously they need to be in ascending order, and then your related percentages. So as you can see for £100, we've got £100 or more, it's going to be 2%, obviously when it reaches 500, it's going to go up to 3%, 1,000 going to go up to 5%, etc. Right, we'll go into invoices, new invoice, choose the customer, and then we'll choose the product. Now straight away you can see it's pulled through the unit price of £100 and the net price for the item is now 98 so it's automatically applied the 2%. Now if we just amend the price there for a second, so we'll see £99, you'll see that this time actually it's just £99. So because the invoice value, the net amount, is below the invoice, sort of the first level of invoice value where the discount would kick in. It hasn't applied any discount. Again, if we drill down, we can see that the discount is zero. But if we set that unit price, we set that back to £100. Message pop up saying total value discount has changed, so we just okay that. And you can see again, if we drill down onto the item line, we're now back to having the 2% applied. We can override those if we needed to, but it will pick it up by default. And just to show you as well, if we set that to C6, so that we're going in above the, the next level of discount, information message pops up, just telling us the total value discount has changed. So we just don't care that. And again, if we drill down on the item, you can see that that's increased to 3% now. Again, nice simple one, but again, it would, it's gonna look at the full invoice value, this type of discount, and it will apply that percentage discount across the board. Let's close out of that one. Go back to customers. We'll just quickly reset that one again. Any questions so far? If you've got any questions, please pop them in there. Either myself or Jackie will, will try and pick that up for you. Right, next one to look at, if we go back to the slides, is product quantity. Now again, this, this product quantity discount as per the table in the top right hand corner, it's only available to you if you are on the professional level of the software. Now what this is, again, it's set up within two areas, so allocating it to the customer, but also within the product record itself. And it enables you to set up a discount based on the quantity of a particular item that you're invoicing. Now it is for a specific item line. Now that's one of the one of the things to be aware of. It's for a specific item line. Now I'll try and explain what I mean by that when we come to invoicing, just so you're aware of it. Now within the product record, in fact, I'll just quickly share my screen. Uh, there we go. So if we go into a product record, so we'll choose the widgets that we've been using so far, and we've got the discount tab running just down the left-hand side there. Let's just maximize that as well. And you can see that we've got three or five tables, I should say, A, B, C, D, and E. So on discount table A, what I'm saying is for this product, if someone buys five five of these items, I'm going to give them a discount of 5%. If they buy 10, I'll give them 10%. If they buy 20, they'll get a discount of 15%. But that's, that's as high as that table goes for this particular item. Now to allocate that type of discount to the customer, 
go into the customer record, into defaults, and it's again within the additional discount. So we need to choose the table that would apply to a specific customer. Now bear in mind the tables, it's gonna be across the board. So if we specify discount table A within the customer's record, it's gonna look at all of the different discount table A's when we specify individual products. We can't say, right, for this product we want to use discount table A, for this product we wanna use table B. So it's table A's across the board for all products. So we'll just quickly save that one. Uh, we'll go and enter an invoice, just so you can see how that one works. So we'll choose the same customer again. Choose the same product. You can see at the moment, £100 unit price has come through and the net £100. So if we drill down, we can see that no discount has been applied so far. Now we'll just change it within here. So again, if we specify, say four, nothing changes. If we specify five, which should be the first level where disc uh, quantity discount applies, you can see that again, it pulls it through automatically. If we change that to 10, you can see it pulls through the relevant rate. So it's pulling through that 10%. So again, nice and straightforward that one. Not, I don't think commonly used the, the, the table discounts. The thing to watch out for, I'll quickly mention that I want to quickly mention this one. So we've just got it set to one. Is if I did this, so let's say I've already, I've, I've entered an invoice so far, and then I come through and I think, oh yeah, the customer wants to order another four of a particular item. So let's say they want to order another four of the, this item. If I set that to four, it's still a hundred pounds. Now they have ordered five of that item on the invoice as a whole. Well, product quantity discount, it works on each specific line. So in this case, because of the way it calculates, it doesn't calculate any discount based on quantity discount. So it's looking at the individual lines. If we combine the two, so we'll just remove that row and then amend this one back to five, then you will see that the, if we drill down, that the discount, it, it does apply it at that point. So that's just a, something to be aware of that when we start adding on additional units, ideally for that one to work, you need to amend the quantity. So you should really only have that item listed once. Right, let's just close out of that one. And we'll go back to customers and quickly remove it and reset it back to no additional. Right. Any any questions on that one at all? If not, we'll move on again. Now the next one, and I touched on this one at the beginning when I was talking about the differences between the unit price and the discount amount or the discount percentage, and it was price lists. Now price lists impacts on the unit price. So where you can essentially specify that when a certain customer buys a certain product, what we want to do is they are going to be charged this unit price. Now that might have a discount calculation in there, but it doesn't impact on the discount percentage itself. It would look at the actual price list and whatever's on that price list, it would use that as the unit price. Now, I don't want to get into price lists in any, in any depth at all. There is a webinar recording available. So when you get your follow-up email, if you are interested in learning about price lists, which is only available again in the professional level of the software, then do check that one out. So we'll include that link so you can watch that recording. It's quite an in-depth topic, the price list option. But it's something that would impact on the unit price, 
not the actual discount amount or percentage. So again, watch out for that one. Right, moving on again. This time, a one-off discount. You get this time, this option, one-off discount, entering it at the time of invoicing. It's available on all levels of the software, so essentials, standard, and professional. So it would be used when you when you agree a one-off discount. You just maybe it, maybe it's something that clinches the sale. The customer turns around and says, "Well, actually, I can get this item a little bit cheaper elsewhere." Can you match that? So more than override the, the unit price, you add a discount percentage or a discount amount. Now, the amount that you enter is the total discount value. It's something to be aware of. It's not the discount off the actual unit price. So if I had a, let's say I had a quantity of five, so it'll be 500 pound in total. If I enter a discount of five pounds, it's the, going to be the 500 less the five pounds that I'm getting charged. If I wanted to discount the unit price, then I would have to work that out and pop in the total discount value. Let's have a quick look at that one. Again, probably the, it's, it's the one that you're most likely to come across where you're entering a one-off discount there and then. Don't need to make any changes this time in the customer's record. All I would do is I would go into invoices, just choose the same customer, we'll choose the same product. And if I drill down on the item, so we got the two boxes. So again, if I entered say 5%, it would work out five pounds in total. Let's just quickly change the quantity as well so you can see it in a bit more detail. So I just set that back to 0%. So if I apply a discount of say 10%, it's going to calculate 10% of the, essentially the, the net amount that would have been calculated is 50 pounds. Let's just reset that back. So let's say I knocked, I'm thinking, and this is where you do want to get confused. I'm thinking, right, I want to knock £10 off, so I want to charge £90 per unit. So if I key £10 in, it's just going to discount the, the total net amount for that item. So it's not calculating 10%, it's calculating £10 of the total item line value. So it's just 2%. Again, that's just something to be aware of when, you, when you're keying in. Now you can amend discounts, so even some of the, the other ones that we've already looked at where they automatically calculate, you can add additional discounts on, on top of that if required. Still a couple of others to go through as well. So let's just cancel out of that one. Let's see if any changes. We'll go back to the slides. And this time, we're going to pick up on net value discount. Now, this is where you would maybe want to apply a one-off discount to the full invoice or order. It's available in both the standard and professional levels. You don't have this available in uh, essentials. If you're on essentials, you would need to use, I suppose the equivalent would be using the discount percentage, but you would need to go against every single item line if you wanted to apply a certain level of discount across the board. Net value discount essentially lets you do that. So you can just say, right, uh, invoice amount is, let's say, £100 net. I want to offer, I'm going to offer you £10 discount in total. It'll do all the other calculations for you. But it's only available in standard and professional. But it's a nice, easy way of saying, right, well, uh, tell you what, we'll, we'll knock £20 off your invoice. So it's a nice, easy way of doing it. Right, let's have a quick look at that one. Back into invoices. And we'll choose the same customer. Pop on the product. Actually, we'll, we'll do a couple of products. Doesn't really matter what it is. 
and the net value discount is this option here. So it appears in red at the bottom. So all I would do if I wanted to key it in or enter a value, I would just say, right, well, I'm going to knock, let's say we, we agree to uh, knock £20 off, off the full invoice value. Now, you'll not see any discount appearing against the individual items at this stage. It will calculate that against various items at the point when you update the items, to the, oh, oh, sorry, update the invoice to the ledgers. But at this stage, we've got the full values against the various lines. We've just got a, essentially a discount amount. Again, nice, easy one to deal with that one. If you wanted to enter a description against it, just click your little, little icon to drill down on the, the net value discount, and you can pop in your description, comment one, comment two. You can key it in as a percentage as well. So if it is a one-off, that's a nice, easy way of doing that. If it's something that's going to be an ongoing thing, you can apply the same discount across the board for this customer each and every time, then you'd probably be, rather than just doing it as a one-off net value discount, you'd be going into the, uh, into the customer record and you would be keying in a discount percentage as the additional discount. So you do that within the record, and it just does it automatically from that point. But normally net value will be used as probably where it's a, more likely where it's a, a one-off, as it were. Right, let's go back to the slides again. Now, the last one I want to demonstrate for you today is negative line. Now, this is this is a fairly, I think of it as a fairly recent option, but it's been around for quite some time now. It's a bit like the negative value discount, but you can add a line to the main part of the, the invoice itself, so the main body of the invoice. It's available in all levels of the software. And it means that you can actually position that if you needed to. Also give it a description. So if you had like, say, let's say 10 items on the invoice, and you want it to certain, almost like position the discount as it were, uh, within the list, then this is where the negative line can come in. Now to apply a negative item line value to your invoice, if it's a product invoice, you've got to use one of the special codes, so S1, S2, or S3. If it's a service item, then that's absolutely fine. So let's have a look at that one. If I just uh, pop back to my screen, into invoices and credits, new invoice, same customer, let's say the same product. Now, if I drill down on this item, this is where the negative item line option will appear. Obviously, it doesn't because it's a standard product in this case. But if I Drill down, and I can either choose S1, S2, or S3. S3, you'll only have that one in case you're looking at yours and you're thinking, I haven't got that one. S3 is only available uh, if you're on the professional level of the software, or you could use S1 or S2 in exactly the same way. So I'll just put discount as the description. and pop in the amount, so I'll say 10 pounds. And what I'm gonna say is, I'm gonna say this is a negative, I wanna make it as a negative. So I just don't care that. And obviously I've, I could pop in a comment one, comment two, just don't care that. And then I could start adding additional items in as well if I needed to. So let's just do one of those again. And it means, as, as you can see, the red line, this piece is negative, means I've got that position where I want it against the relevant lines. Again, nice, easy one to, to handle that one. Been around for quite some time, but as I say, I still think of that as a fair, fairly recent option, that one. Again, any questions or comments, pop them into the questions panel. I would encourage you as well, if, if you're want to find out more about them, do download a copy of the slides, so via the handouts link on your toolbar. Uh, 
if you download your handout, it will, again, you'll have a copy of the slides that we're using today, so you'll know what's applicable to you. And again, you've got the, the demonstration company, and you've also got the practice company to have a go of these options on if you want to test them out before you, you go live in, in your software itself. Right, let's pop back to the slides again. And the final one I want to quickly mention, I'm not going to demonstrate this one, but I want to quickly mention it and it's settlement discount or what's often referred to as prompt payment discount. It is available in all three levels. So you would set a customer's uh, settlement discount percentage within their record. You can key that in. But there are different methods available as to how you should handle that settlement discount. So when the time comes to pay off the invoice, etc. A couple of different methods you can use. And I would encourage if you want to find out more about that specific type of discount, that you do check out the, the information that's available on our help centre. There are detailed guidelines in there on how to process that within your accounting software. But available, at, again, available in all levels, that one. Now, the next thing to mention is invoice and order defaults, or if you're on the essentials level, just it'll just be called invoice defaults. Now, within this area, which we'll have a look at in just a second, you have a number of options. This can sometimes, some would argue it gives you that added flexibility. Others just think, well, you maybe think, well, actually, it makes it a bit more complex. And it's it helps you to determine when discount, how it should calculate, but also when it should apply. So let's just have a quick look at these options within the software. Now it does differ. So on the table at the top, I've got a mentions partial for essentials and standard. I'll quickly explain that when we get into that screen. Right, okay, we go into settings and then invoice and order defaults. Again, if you're on the essentials level, it's just gonna be called invoice defaults. But if you go into it, and it's the discounts tab at the top that we're looking for. So you've got four areas, you've got unit price, and this is where you can choose to calculate your, uh, the discount based on uh, unit price, or do you want a discount on the uh, the full value? So it, it's basically, if you're, let's say you're applying a, a percentage and it, it's all to do with rounding. So are you wanting to, let's say you had five items at X amount, or you want to calculate the percentage on the individual unit price and then multiply it by the quantity Or are you wanting to have the quantity multiplied by the, the existing unit price and then calculate the discount? So it can have an impact depending on the, I suppose, the unit prices. If you're, if you're dealing with fractions of a pence, uh, you may find uh, that you get potentially different outcomes depending on your options. So it depends how you would calculate that or your preferred method for calculating. Now, the apply quantity and value discounts, this option would only avail be available, this area is available on the professional level. It's not available in the essentials level or the standard level. You find this option is grayed out. So it's, do you want to apply quantity or value discounts when there's a special price involved, so where there's a price list price used? or sorry, a special price or a price, price list price. So are you wanting to apply discounts on top or not? And there's a couple of other options in there as well. So again, it's just gonna be where it can get a little bit more complex. Discounting special items. Again, this option, this, this panel here, it's only available to you if you're on the professional level of the software. And it's the always apply value discounts. 
two special items, so S1, S2 and S3. So because these are normally used for one-off items, are you wanting to apply things like invoice value discounts, or you want to take that into account, the, or the, these items into account, the S1, S2 and S3 item, when they're included on the invoice? So again, you can switch that on or off. The final option, this is quite a, quite a good one, this one, this, this option, is available at all levels, this option, and it's show discount on main invoice order or slash order screen. Now, what this does is, if I just cancel out of this for a moment, and I go to invoices and credits, just choose a new invoice, you'll see the columns that I have, or product code, description, quantity, price, net, but. So if I want to find out information about the discount percentage or discount amount applied to a certain line, what I've got to do is I've got to drill down. So I've got to go into the individual item line itself. So I've got to get into the edit item line window to see this information here. Whereas, if we go back to settings, invoice and order defaults, and this time I'll switch the option on, show discount on main invoice stroke order screen. If we go up to invoice and credits, and you'll see this time we can see the discount amount and discount percentage columns. I don't need to drill down to see that. And what I can also do when I'm entering the invoice is enter the amount directly into those columns. So discount amount, let's let's base it on percentage. And it means that I'm not having to drill down. So it can be a little bit quicker if you're dealing with discount, discounts quite a bit within your invoicing area. So just to confirm that setting, because it's it's a one that's not switched on by default. It was settings, invoice and order defaults. It's on the discounts tab and it's this little checkbox here. So that would show the additional two columns on your front screen. I'm just going to switch it off so I'm back to the, the default view. Right, now obviously there's been quite a few uh, discount options that we've looked at today. So common question. Uh, specifically on the professional level of software, what discounts are actually applied? I've got a percentage, but or a, a discount amount, but what what discounts are actually being applied to my item? So where is it coming from? How is it calculating? So when you drill down on an item line, you've got this discounts option at the bottom, and clicking that will give you the discount breakdown. So what I'm going to quickly do, we'll just go back to my screen. I'll apply a few different discount types. So we'll go into customers and we'll pick on the same customer into defaults. I'll pop, let's say 5% in there. On the additional discounts, what I'll do is I'll choose, uh, let's use the invoice value. Save it. And then if we go into an invoice, choose the customer, choose a product, and I'll just set it to uh, two. And if we drill down on the item line itself, you can see that we've got 7% or 14 pounds. Now, if we're looking at that thing, where on earth does that come from? That's where this discounts option can help. So if I click that, it will now give me that breakdown. So I can see customer discount percentage. So that's the one that we set within the record. It's picking up 5% from there. And it's also picking up 2% from the invoice value. So that's, if you're not sure, that's the thing to do. Drill down on the item level and then click this discounts option at the bottom. It'll bring up that discount breakdown and you'll be able to track it down from that point.
Right, now that covers all of the discount options that I think we needed to cover today. I had to double check about five times just to make sure I was covering all of the discount options that were available when entering invoices. Uh, we've covered them all. So it gives you some food for thought. Some of you will think, well, we, we don't use that type. We don't want to use that one. Uh, but others, you might be thinking, oh, that's how you do that. That might be a bit of a shortcut. So if you've been frantically keying in like 2% discount against every single item for a certain customer each and every time, you know now you can go into the record, set up the additional discount of 2%. Just do it automatically for you then, save you a little bit of time. Right, now if we pop back to the slides, a little bit more information to give you, keep your questions coming. Uh, Jackie will pick those up in the background. A little bit of information. You, if you've attended a webinar recently, you'll probably have, you'll have seen us or you've heard us talking about Sage membership. Sage membership, you may have received emails on this. And you'll see it advertised on our website here and there as well at the moment. Uh, Sage membership just brings together a number of areas that you essentially you already have access to. So Sage University, where we host all of our online learning courses or free to access, Sage City, which is our, I suppose, our, our user forum. So there you can see blogs, and we've got questions and answers, advice, et cetera. You can put your questions in as well if you need to, but Sage City and also Sage Masterclass. Now Sage Masterclass is essentially a series of, uh, I suppose, presentations where we're not looking specifically at software. What we're looking at is just general business advice. So experts in their own fields talking about a particular topic. So season one, loads of videos available on that, all about finding and keeping great people. Season two has just gone live as well. So season two is all about productivity. So if you're interested in finding out more about them, if you've downloaded the slides, your link at the bottom will work. Otherwise, just head along to sage.com slash UK slash masterclass and you can start watching them. Upcoming webinars wise, loads of sessions planned in. If you haven't had a look at the timetable recently, as of uh, as of sorry, as of Monday of this week, uh, we've made the November timetable available. So do check out, see what's coming up. Some new topics, uh, picking up on the report design a little bit more. Uh, we've got a quiz to celebrate International Accounting Day. If you want to come along and test your knowledge, uh, get yourself signed up for that one. Uh, budgets. Jackie will be running that one with you all tomorrow. If you're interested, get yourself signed up. And if you've got any requests of topics you'd like to see covered, then let us know. You can pop that information, the ideas you have, pop them onto the exit survey. That should appear as you leave the session today. So it should take you no longer than a minute to complete that little survey. If you can pop some comments on there, greatly appreciated. We'll always like to read your comments, see if we've hit the mark or not. Followed by emails you receive in round about, a, I think it'd be two hours today because it's a new topic, this one. So it gives us a chance to host the recordings. Uh, so watch out for that one. It will include links so that you can register for other webinars and also watch the recordings. If you need a little bit of a recap on anything we've covered today, just watch out for that one. So you should get that around about two hours time. Now, if you've got any questions, if you want to quickly pop them in there, we'll just give it another couple of minutes to see if any questions do come through, but we don't have anything outstanding at the moment. So Jackie's just about managed to pick them all up there. But if you think of anything that you want to ask, if you want to quickly pop it in, we'll hang around just for a couple of minutes and pick that up. But otherwise, if you're about to leave, thanks for coming along. Hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. Bit of a whirlwind tour of uh, discounts, that one, as there's so many options to cover. But again, there's very detailed in, uh, steps, information about the discount options. It's all available within our help center, should you need it. So again, do check that out. If you think of any questions afterwards, obviously check out the help center, but also you know, you know to get in touch with our support team. So any questions you're not sure about something, we're here to help.
Uh, quick question, Morgan, you mentioned there, uh, could you advise what layout would show the discount on the invoice? Uh, as you know, there, there are, well, there are loads and loads of uh, options available when it comes to uh, printing or emailing your invoices. So some of them will actually say that in brackets. Uh, let me just see if I can give you an example. I'll need to quickly enter an invoice. So let me just quickly save that one. So when we go to the print option and go into layouts, some will actually say with discount, some will say without discount. So it's just a case of you, you choosing. Again, if you've designed your own, it depends what changes you've made. So it's just a case of choosing the appropriate one. You can obviously always highlight one and obviously preview it. But you'll see loads of them will say will will say with discount or without discount. It's the main thing. Do you want to show it or not? I think the big thing to consider if you don't offer a discount to everyone is if you send out an invoice and the discount column is blank or says zero, then would that encourage your customers to come back and think, well, why am I not getting a discount? So that just maybe just something to think about. But again, that's the way to tell. So generally, it will be in the, the name of that one. If you design your own, just a case of trying, trying it and see, see if it includes it or not, you can always amend that invoice layout should you need to. Right, on that note, we'll pop back to the slides. Uh, once again, many thanks for coming along uh, this afternoon. I hope you have enjoyed it. As I say, a bit of a whirlwind tour. So do use that demo data, the practice company means that you can have a go of these options without impacting on your live data. Make sure you understand how they work before going live with it. So take care, stay safe, and hopefully we'll see you on some future webinars. Many thanks.